Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are working with shorter attention spans as we come to this moment of looking at your word and hoping that it speaks to us, that it encourages us, that it gives us something to think about, that it feeds and it nurtures us on our journey. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. Open our ears, open our understanding, and open our hearts. Amen. Today, a sermonic title is The First Day of School. Some of you might have thought, well, it's long beyond the first day of school. (laughs) Every year, kids from all over the world go back to school. They return with new outfits. They return with new haircuts and styles. They return with yearly physicals that say they are ready to learn and they are ready for sports. They return with new school supplies. They return to a whole new grade. They return to new teachers. They return to new subjects and new expectations. They return to a new class makeup, the excitement of who's in their class and the friends that are not in their class this year. They return to new extracurricular activities. They return to new social dynamics. They return to new opportunities for personal growth and development. On social media, you'll find families posting these pictures of their kids First day, back to school. It's a whole thing. Kids with fresh outfits and backpacks and loads of supplies marching off to school. They return looking precious and ready for whatever the school year holds for them. God bless America. There's this real sense of hope at the beginning of the school year. But do you know what kids really get at the beginning of the school year? They get a fresh start, a fresh start. This is where we enter the biblical text today. The Israelites needed, they needed a fresh start. They had already been deported and forcibly relocated in Babylon. The exile has been a traumatic experience for Judah and Jerusalem. After the first siege of Jerusalem around 598 BCE by Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian army, Thousands of Judeans had been deported to Babylon. A second siege of the city, far more devastating in its effects, had taken place around 587 BCE. The city walls had been breached and the temple destroyed. The city and the country were totally demolished. During their exile, which lasted, For about 70 years, the Israelites faced challenges such as adapting to a different culture, preserving their identity and faith, and longing for their homeland. And all the while, the prophet Jeremiah had encouraged the people to change and make their relationship with God right. In the prophecies of prophet Jeremiah, he warned the people what would happen if they did not obey God's laws and put God first. Jeremiah did interpret the exile as divine punishment from God. The Israels faced their darkest hour since coming out as slaves from Egypt. The Israelites needed a fresh start. At Malik's school, they had an app that would describe the children's behavior. There were three colors, green, yellow, and red. The app helped parents know how their children were doing each day in school. It was also meant to positively reinforce good behavior. Since Malik had begun the first grade, many of his days in school, the app reported red for behavior. No matter how hard he tried, by the end of the school day, usually there would be red. It was Friday, the beginning of the weekend, and he was looking forward to TV privileges, but the day had not gone well. Malik had heard a word from his teacher today in class that intrigued him. That word was grace. His teacher had carefully explained that grace was an act of kindness 
that any human being could offer to another human being, especially when they didn't deserve it. On the ride home from school, Malik was thinking about TV, some kind of bad. He approached the subject with his dad, and his dad was quick to remind him of the red, the red he had earned in school. It was then that Malik decided to learn, try out, try out this new word he had learned from his, from his teacher. Dad, what about grace? Malik's dad was startled that his son knew such a word, grace, a word he had only heard in church. Curious, he asked his son what he knew about grace. When Malik was able to describe everything that the teacher had described to him, his dad decided for this night, Malik would get a fresh new start. And on red, he got to watch TV. People need fresh starts. It is easy to imagine the despair that could have come over Israel by taking Jeremiah's preaching to heart. I mean, Jeremiah was really hitting hard. He had been proclaiming the destruction of the nation because of the sins of the fathers, the refusal of the people over a period of several generations truly to repent and return to God. He had even concluded that the people were so accustomed to sin that they not only would not change, but it appeared that they could not change. There's only so much negativity one can take before one feels crippled. And Jeremiah was bringing it on while the world around him was crumbling. The Israelites needed a fresh start. Sometimes people need a fresh start. Have any of you heard of T. Sarisa? <laughs> this lady has gone viral reporting her relationship with a pathological liar in a 52-part TikTok series. She's been on Good Morning America. She's got a trip to Paris. She discovered in her relationship nearly everything her boyfriend had told her was not true. She says by telling her story, she hopes to encourage others when necessary to leave. While at United Church of Hyde Park, we embrace committed, healthy relationships, and we have some beautiful examples in our church of what that looks like, past and present. Sometimes people need a fresh start. T. Sarisa got that fresh start a month ago. My friend called me up this week letting me know she got a new job. What do you think that bought? She didn't even give a two-week notice. I said, girl, be professional. Fresh starts. I often meet folks new to Hyde Park who have moved from all over the world. Fresh starts. People need fresh starts. Today, this text, after much anguish and trauma, offers us a fresh start. More than a new covenant is a new chance to have a relationship with God. Here's a fresh start for hope and a new future. I am making a new covenant with my people for which I will put it on their hearts, says Jeremiah. I'm giving this community a fresh start of faith through and beyond exile, and they will know me deeply. We will ride into the sunset together. We need others sometimes to give us a fresh start. I hear from sometimes people that are born into a church that members don't see them as adults. They still see me as a child. They still remember me from when I was a teenager. Sometimes when we have journeyed together for a lot of years, we can begin to see people in a certain way, even when they change. Amen? We'll say, that's just Lena. That's just Jack. No harm meant not leaving much room for growth. Sometimes we can offer a fresh start to others. Touching for me this week, even in the midst of my recovery, I got a message from my cousin. I hadn't heard from this cousin in over five years. And um, she stopped talking to me. I mean, she was good and mad. And even after I tried to talk to her, she was really still mad. Her mom died, and 
her expectation was that I would fly in. And so when I didn't come to the funeral in person, she got mad and she held that against me. And so for years, we have not talked. And this week, she wrote me and she said, I can't, I can't go on without my life, without giving forgiveness to you. And I thought, hey, let's roll with it. I don't need to dig in the past. Great. I offered her a fresh start. Sometimes one of the best things we can do is offer a fresh start to somebody else. No matter what age you are, there are always opportunities for fresh starts. I know some of you are thinking, I'm too old for a fresh start. No, you're not. You are never too old for a fresh start. People need fresh starts, just like my cousin, to leave behind negative experience and habits or circumstances. People need fresh starts to forgive and start a new chapter. People need fresh starts to prioritize their physical, mental, and emotional health. They ask me how I know about that one. Fresh starts can open opportunities to new doors, whether it's starting a new business, pursuing a passion project, embarking on a new adventure. When we first went into COVID, I heard a lot of people doing UFOs, unfinished projects. A fresh start can be a part of personal growth in their self-improvement journey. People need fresh starts. The Israelites were not exempt from this. On the other side of exile, a fresh start was needed. On the other side of forced relocation, a fresh start was needed. On the other side of mistakes made over and over again, a fresh start was needed. On the other side of trauma, a fresh start was needed. On the other side of loss, a fresh start was needed. On the other side of the wilderness, a fresh start was needed. On the other side of abysmal failure, a fresh start was needed. The future would be different for them. God was renewing God's covenant with God's people. God was wiping the slate clean. Just like the Israel and the Isles needed a new start, so do we. Just like the Israelites were not exempt, Neither are we. On the other side of problems after problems, fresh starts are needed. On the other side of this is the way we have done it, fresh starts are needed. On the other side of despair and hopelessness, fresh starts are needed. On the other side of pain and suffering, fresh starts are needed. On the other side of trauma and mental anguish, fresh starts are needed. Every now and then, we all could use a fresh start. We could all use the first day of school. Imagine in the areas of your life and relationships, if you're working your job, your church, the committee you serve on, a fresh start. I began today with a new school year that happens around the world as a fresh start. I almost feel something watching kids head off to school with this new fresh start. But I'd like to conclude here today with another story about a fresh start. Timothy, Timothy is the product of two Armenian immigrant parents who came to America to give him and his siblings, to give him and his siblings a brighter future. Timothy got married to Amika, another product of immigrant parents who came from Russia to give their children a brighter future. Timothy, since he was five years old, always wanted to live on a boat, but life happens. He got married and they had four beautiful daughters together, but the dream of living on a boat stayed with him. Timothy had a family and so he went to work. He developed a computer company and built a successful building. But about five years ago, the dream came back to him right in the middle of COVID, and he shared it with his family. Little by little, they got on board, and three years ago, they sailed off. Timothy got his fresh start, but fresh starts are not just for students in Timothy. 
Fresh starts are not just for Malik and his dad. Fresh starts are not just for Tisa Risa and people on social media. Fresh starts are not just for Judah and Jerusalem. Fresh starts are for you, the people of God. Fresh starts are for the crooked, the straight, and otherwise. Fresh starts are for those with 2020 and those who see things differently. Fresh starts are for those with humble beginnings and rough starts and people born in struggle. Fresh starts are for those who have been through the valley and those who are soaring high. Fresh starts, they're for you. They're for you and you and you. Amen.